Being tormented by past memories and unforgiving guilt, Rebecca Owens completes her degree in mortuary sciences and intends to complete a review supervised by her teacher, Raymond Delver, with other entities tormenting her with visualizations of her source of guilt, which puts her in a situation to win a fight and survive the night or give in for the demons to take over her. Hi folks, I'm R, and welcome to Mortuary Assistant, which for the lack of better words scared the soul out of my buddy in certain parts. Keep in mind that this video will have spoilers, and with that said, let's begin. The story starts in Connecticut, 1998, with an old woman having a conversation with a young woman in a diner, congratulating her for having a new job, despite its nature seeming to be in a macabre field. The young woman is called Rebecca, who is having a conversation with her grandmother about being hired as a mortuary assistant in a local place in their town, which is called Riverfields, a place which is infamous for its legends and ghost stories. The day passes by, with Rebecca going to Riverfields, which is a review day after already being there for several days. Encountering Raymond Delver, her teacher, being already present in the mortuary, Rebecca is instructed to take the corpse of someone called Mr. Dalton to the mortuary cabinet and take the body of someone else called Mrs. Page in order to assess her body and record any distinguishing marks. Being part of her review, she does so and records any marks on a clipboard, then subsequently transferring the recordings on a computer file. As the next step is to start the embalming process, she proceeds to carry out the task up until the moisturizing process when the corpse transforms in a horrifying manner, with her skin starting to burn, staring at Rebecca with her cloudy eyes when Raymond instructs her to stop and head out, with him finalizing her paperwork and telling her to start tomorrow, seemingly passing her in the review. That's when she notices Mrs. Page's corpse being back to normal, thinking as if she's starting to lose her mind, but stopping herself from saying anything, as this would cause her fail her review, making it seem to Raymond as if she doesn't have a stable mind for this job. As Rebecca goes back home, night soon dawns, with Rebecca being on the phone with one of her friends called Megan, explaining how she is so stressed for not passing the review. Just as she describes the day, Raymond calls, asking Rebecca if she can go to Riverfields to take care of three cadavers, saying that he already passed her and her badge is already ready for her to use. Rebecca nervously but happily accepts, even though it's late at night and it wasn't something planned, with the earliest anyone else going to the mortuary being tomorrow morning. As Rebecca goes to the mortuary, she gets startled by a figure waiting outside when she gets a call from Raymond, who is the person outside, saying that he planned the urgent visitation as she is in the process of being possessed with an entity being bound to her, which wouldn't be safe for her to go outside and interact with others. Rebecca, being furious and thinking she's being toyed with, wanting nothing to do with this anymore, gets instructed to stay and work on the corpses inside as apparently, typically the bodies don't act up, with Rebecca having nothing to worry about. That's when Raymond prematurely cuts the line, not explaining fully of what is happening. Raymond then calls back with Rebecca saying how she doesn't want to work for him anymore when he explains that she has been targeted by a demon and the only way to save herself is to learn the demon's name, bind the demon to its chosen buddy in the morgue and eventually burn it in the retort. Raymond continues that he recorded several messages on different cassettes which should be played before encountering the demon, continuing that the name of the demon should be learned and the correct buddy should be burned to be saved, with the entire process being so something Raymond had years to learn and faced before, with Rebecca only having a few hours to learn all of it. As everything can be manipulated by the demon, including the phone lines, Raymond explains that he won't call anymore, with the demon wanting to manipulate her. Therefore, any further calls should be avoided, as it would be from the demon wanting to take grasp of Rebecca. 
Listening to the three cassettes, Raymond explains to Rebecca the full process of resisting the demon from possessing care and how to bind the demon to a dead body and burn them. A set of old ritualistic equipment, including items labeled as Mark and letting slips, are used to identify the location of the demonic sigils and how to bind them to a body. Using a piece of paper and pen allows Rebecca to know how deep she is into being possessed herself, what she needs to do random scribbling on, and if something looks strange, it would mean that Rebecca is losing more and more control to the demon. With everything being so sudden and hard to believe, Rebecca proceeds to embark bond the bodies. When strange events start to happen, making Rebecca to second guess herself, starting to give the idea of a demon being present a shot. Being terrified as a result, starting to see the dead bodies coming to life for split seconds, and hearing whispers of herself as if being embodied in a different presence, Rebecca decides to leave when a strong impulse prevents her, and a demonic presence appearing, staring right at her direction. Rebecca starting to believe Raymond goes back to the mortuary, continuing her work and starting the process of embalming the cadavers with the special reagent bottles which were next to the mark and letting slips. As she's working on a body, she starts hallucinating and seeing the half lifeless body of her own lying on a dirty mattress in a rundown graffiti ridden room which portrays how she was high and drunk to the brink of death constantly in her past life. Her embodiment starts to talk, blaming her for the death of her father. When Rebecca becomes emotional, finding it difficult to compose herself, when the demon rushes towards her, demanding her body, seemingly wanting to break Rebecca's mind and borrow its way into her. Rebecca is then suddenly back to reality, discovering herself to have been hallucinating. Trying to continue with her work, she is pulled into a surreal fever dream, where she is placed in a psych ward, reminiscing on what she went through, being prescribed antidepressants alongside many other meds to cope with life. In a surreal scene where Rebecca has ended it, witnessing in horror as this was something Rebecca struggled with in real life, she reads notes that represent her thoughts, notes describing how Rebecca struggled with negative thoughts of being the reason for her father's death. Death that resulted in Rebecca's severe mental breakdown, ending up being admitted in a psych ward where she was holding something sentimental, the necklace of her father, in order to help her recover and keep a piece of him with her. However, as she felt guilty, she couldn't bring herself to keep it any longer, feeling undeserving, which she subsequently gives to her grandmother. This is the very same necklace the grandmother gave to Rebecca in the beginning of the story while they were in a diner, hence why she was hesitant to accept it, as it brought more pain than closure to her, struggling to forgive herself, a sentimental item that is associated with her father. Finding a sobriety coin of five years from her father, it depicts how the father alongside the grandmother were supporting Rebecca heavily to get her life back, something that seemingly led to the father's death, which despite that, the grandmother still supported Rebecca and was proud of her but something that caused Rebecca extreme depression and mental health issues, something she couldn't forgive herself for. More hallucinations depict how Rebecca was symbolically drowning herself in drugs, partying with other deadbeats while her father was running around in stress just to find her and save her. As Rebecca was only 14 at the time and did hardcore drugs, her father kept calling the police to find her, begging them to help, which at one point he finds caring cops who do eventually help. As he finds her body next to Seaside, gagging in her own body fluids, seemingly the place that she went to party, almost being to the point of death, the father alerts the police but as he rushes back to her body, anxious for her safety, he slips, smashes his head and eventually dies due to head trauma. If Rebecca manages to identify the body that the demon is latching to and burn it, she passes out due to the severe exhaustion and awakens the following morning to be welcomed by Raymond. Raymond, who wasn't transparent from the beginning, warning Rebecca of what she would face, explains that he has been looking for an assistant in helping him face the demons and battle them, with Rebecca being the only one who managed to survive, with his previous assistant seemingly all dying. He 
proceeds to offer her a new job to face her darkness and come to terms with them as the demonic entities go hand in hand with people's inner demons and managing to face and subdue them mean managing to overcome the actual demons. In another ending, managing to burn the right buddy, Rebecca is faced with Raymond in the following morning, who both come to terms with their doomed fate, surviving a day at a time, fighting the demons, being careful as one little mistake could lead to their death. In this ending, managing to uncover a secret key to a locked hatch, Rebecca finds documents that are archived by Raymond about how he managed to overcome the demons. After losing a few assistants to demons, he kept one of them called Valerie, whom he locked in the hatch, feeding her and taking care of her despite her soul seemingly being far gone. Since 1989, he's been trying to find a way to banish the demon from her body and bring her back. In a way, trying to find a cure for people who have been possessed already. Raymond in fact became possessed himself, traveling to Egypt and meeting with someone called Salah, who was very helpful on giving him information on the demons. Raymond has been trying to find assistance to run the mortuary and help fight the demons, as he's been struggling himself. Using the letting slips, identify the name of the demons, using the clay tablets carved can be used to name the demon correctly, and using it to bind the demon to a body, which can be eventually burned. Managing to burn the right body, Rebecca awakens in the following morning, confronting Raymond for keeping Valerie in the hatch, letting her suffer for years. He explains that it's a necessary evil for his survival, as that's the only way he can have a steady supply of reagents, which is the blood of the demon flowing through the body of the possessed. Raymond then explains that he killed his previous assistants who were all possessed, which caused them to live in debilitating guilt, but something that prevented more from being possessed. In this ending, if Rebecca burns the wrong body, it appears at first as if she burned the right body, with the demon jumping out of the retort and crawling towards her, which causes the demon to be pulled back and scream in agony. Rebecca passes out due to exhaustion, which leads to the following morning, with Raymond being back, happy that Rebecca managed to resist the demon's grasp. As Rebecca asks if it's all over, she quickly is taken over by the demon, who telekinetically lifts Raymond and breaks his bones, killing him in an agonizing manner, which portrays how Rebecca burned the wrong body, with the demon managing to complete the position and break through to Rebecca. In this ending, if Rebecca places the body in the retour too early or fails the shift, she awakens in the hatch next to Valerie, seeing that she's being restrained by Raymond, who places her in a standing coffin, keeping her alive in order to find a way to rescue her and banish the demon that has possessed her. Or also, he could use her body to get the reagent fluids. This is simply known as the game overending. In another ending, if Rebecca picks up her necklace and sobriety coins from her apartment, she manages to face an embodiment of herself and come to terms with her mistakes. After managing to burn the right body, she has a surreal encounter with her father Ben, who embraces her and comforts her that none of this was her fault and that she should forgive herself and move on. It's revealed that Rebecca's downward spiral into addiction was directly resulted from her mother's bad choices in life, being drowned in drugs herself, not giving the love and care Rebecca ever needed, which made the young, impressionable teenage Rebecca give in to her demons and take a similar path. But her father never giving up on her, it resulted in his death, which caused Rebecca to never forgive herself. This encounter finally comforts Rebecca, overcoming her demons and past memories, able to continue her work in the mortuary, with no demons seemingly able to break through her anymore. And that's it for the end of this video, folks. Depending on how this video will do, I might make subsequent videos explaining other backstories of the game. If you folks enjoyed that, make sure to stay tuned for more by hitting on the subscribe button and the notification bell. If you also have any game or video suggestions, you can DM me or tag me on my Twitter. It's been your host, Star, and I will see you on the next one. Take care.